Okay, so I'm just going to um, have this ball uh, fly into our scene here, uh, hit the ground round about uh, here or somewhere on camera, uh, bounce up, bounce against this wall, and uh, come back and generally anything that sort of looks interesting in this, this area uh, as we walk through the scene. Uh, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to apply some initial velocity to our um, active rigid body. And so coming down to the rigid body settings you can see that we have uh, initial velocity and we also have initial spin which we're going to be using. So the uh, initial velocity, uh, we can see that the direction that we need this ball to move in is along the x-axis and also uh, along the negative z-axis because we need it to come back uh, this way towards camera. Uh, so um, where it's placed at the moment, uh, it looks like it could be a, a sort of a 45 degree angle to this area here. And so we, we need uh, probably roughly the same amount as, uh, as um, uh, same amount in X as we do in Z or negative Z. So I'm just going to try values of 800 and see how that looks. So I'm just going to uh, try and find a good angle on this. That'll have to do. Uh, rewind and play. Okay. Now we can see that the ball is coming uh, too far over to um, uh, the left from where we're looking, which is uh, coming too far back into our scene. So we need to reduce this initial velocity here to maybe something like negative 400. So let's rewind and play. Okay. Uh, at the moment we are hitting the uh, front of this uh, box section here uh, and I want it to go a little bit further this way. I need it to go a little bit further in X so I'll just up this to 1000 even. And now we'll rewind and play and let's see what we got. Okay, a couple of things have happened. First, we know that uh, we're still getting, we're still coming a little bit short and we're bouncing off this front edge. But also, the ball is passing straight through this wall here. Uh, now, if we check this wall, we can see that it is, uh, it is still receiving inputs from it being a dynamic object. Uh, we know that it's a, um, a passive rigid body. Uh, so why is this wall uh, not obstructing the path of our ball the way that this ground plane is. Well the reason for it is that uh, NURBS objects uh, when used as dynamic objects like this um, when, uh, when an object comes to interact with it it only interacts with uh, one face uh, or, or the uh, uh, one facing angle on each uh, NURBS patch or each NURBS surface. Uh, to put it another way, um, this floor here, this ground plane, uh, is currently uh, face up, uh, which means that anything that falls from above is going to bounce off this floor and react normally. But if we were to shoot something up through this floor, uh, it would pass uh, either through this floor or it would get stuck in this floor. Um, it wouldn't interact in uh, the proper way. And uh, that's what's happening with our wall because we've uh, to create our wall all we did was we took our ground plane and we rotated it up on this edge which means that our um, actual faces that uh, work for our dynamics are now on this side of the wall and we need them to be on this side of the wall. Now rather than uh, grab this wall and uh, rotate it around and try and match it up and place it in the right space uh, all we have to do is uh, under the surfaces um, uh, uh, menu set, uh, under edit NURBS, we can come down to reverse surface direction. If I just uh, click on that, now if we rewind, our ball will still be bouncing in the wrong place here, but hopefully it should bounce off our wall.
and there we go so our wall works now but we need to fix up where this where this ball is landing so uh, I'm just going to rewind so I'm just looking at the options for this ball and um, uh, we could increase this inertial uh, this initial velocity in X to really sort of uh, fire it uh, further out uh, but I don't want it to have too much uh, inertia in this uh, in this direction because it will cause it to to perhaps bounce a little bit too far but what we can do is perhaps give it a little bit of initial velocity in Y meaning that we actually uh, more or less kick this ball up as it's coming in this this direction uh, which would mean that the ball will arc uh, more and it will um, it will come in as if it's been kicked from uh, the field off on this side uh, and so I'm just going to add an initial velocity of about 200 now if we rewind and play let's see what we've got okay we're now bouncing in the right place there because we're hitting the ground about here uh, if we rewind and have a look at that again you can see that we are hitting the wall and we are bouncing off this pole and sort of rolling around in this section here now that's not too bad um, but I would perhaps prefer it to be rolling a little bit um, towards camera uh, and we can also see uh, from the start that if we play there's no actual rotation on the ball until it hits this uh, this wall here which will look a bit strange um, if we uh, put a texture or a material on this object uh, and so I'm just going to apply a little bit of spin to it so I'll just rewind and have a look at what we need um, I'd like the the ball to be spinning um, this way so uh, that's counterclockwise and that's along the z-axis so uh, I'm just going to under the initial spin z I'm going to add something like negative 90 and see how we go with that and hit play and that looks pretty good uh, it's rolling a little bit far this way uh, might want to slow that down just a touch uh, so I can take this down to something like negative uh, 60 rewind and play there we go we've got a little bit of backspin there and it's just sort of um, just rolling around this area here and it might just go off frame as we as we walk um, the full length of our of our uh, scene uh, so that's looking pretty good uh, if I if I'm a bit worried about uh, the actual uh, movement here if, I, if I'm worried about this backspin uh, and also about it sort of maybe looking a little bit flat if I uh, if I play it the ball is sort of it's not uh, bouncing very high so um, I might just up the bounciness here something like point 0.8 rewind and play yeah I like that that looks a lot more animated uh, I might also introduce some uh, damping just so that we um, just so that it doesn't look like it's a completely solid ball uh, meaning that it's not like a bowling ball that's bouncing around that it is uh, some sort of inflated ball and so let's have a look at this okay now the uh, damping has uh, reduced our bounce here and so it has uh, caused it to um, to not go the full angle which means that it doesn't come down this way so let's have a look at damping of point one and see how that goes and that's not bad we do have some sort of spin there 
and we might be able to uh, iron that out with our initial spin up here. Uh, what I might do is actually put a little bit of spin in X. So I'll just try um, a small value and see how it affects the overall outcome of our bounce. Because it's going in the wrong direction, I'm going to try that with a negative value. And there we go. Now we're not hitting this pole anymore, but um, I actually like the pathway that this ball is taking. This sort of zigzag going all the way along and hitting this, um, this square retaining wall here and bouncing back. So I'm just going to keep it at that. Let's have a look at it through the RZ camera and see what it looks like when we're going to be animating this scene. What I might do is just switch to wireframe. Yeah, I like that. That looks nice and realistic. So, uh, now that we... Uh, don't do that. <laughs> That's not a good idea when you're running Dynamics. So, uh, with this ball all set up, uh, what I might do is take these objects and put them on a separate layer, just so I, I can template them out. So I'll just go up to the Perspective camera, and I'll come around to a side view, maybe zoom back a little. Now I don't want to select these um, tracker points and I know that these are locators uh, so I'm just going to uh, uncheck the select miscellaneous objects in our selection filter and then I'll just draw a selection box where I'm containing um, actually I just need to get that that side as well and so uh, now I've got all of these uh, these NURBS objects here, so I'm just going to move these to a new layer. And I'll call this Background Geometry. And I'm going to template that out. Uh, now if I uh, switch back to a shaded mode, uh, you can see that this object is still shaded whereas uh, this is still a sort of a grayed out wireframe. Now um, I'd like uh, if I come back and have a look in the RZ camera uh, we can now see this uh, uh, this background is overlaid like a sort of a wireframe of our background uh, and if we click play we can see our ball coming in. Now, unfortunately, without that wireframe, uh, we can't really see how this ball is spinning. It's just this sort of gray, um, gray circle uh, bouncing around our scene. So I'd like to have some indicator of the actual spin of this ball. So the way that I'm going to do that uh, is I'll just uh, I'll come back to about here, and I'm just going to select this ball and I'm going to assign a new material and I'll make it a blin. Now uh, I'll call this ball mat and under the color I'm just going to click on this checkbox and I'm going to select a ramp. Now this ramp I'm going to change a couple of options instead of linear interpolation I'm going to pick none and uh, I'm just going to select this color swatch in the middle and I'm going to set that to uh, the pos uh, its selected position I'm going to change that to 3.333 and the uh, one above here I'm just going to select take its selected position and turn that to 0.666 and now if we look in our viewport with it shaded we can see that we have this sort of um, almost beach ball effect and uh, I'll be completing this look in the next lesson